I'm into the second week here in March in Maine, and the weather is starting to get warmer a little every day, and I'm starting to have the feeling that I'm going to survive my first winter here homesteading. And so I thought I would take a little bit of time to talk about what it's been like to spend my first winter on this homesteading project, some of the things that I liked about it, some of the challenges, and uh, kind of what I'm looking forward to next year and how I might do things different. So <clears throat> I'd say one of the things that I liked a lot was for some reason, I've been sleeping really great this winter. I'm not sure if it's the fact that I'm in the woods or if it's because the days are shorter, but when I lay down my head on the pillow at night in that yom, I just sleep like a rock. It's been really wonderful. <laughs> And uh, the, the scenery is just, just gorgeous. You know, after a fresh snow, all of the pine trees are covered with snow and the roads are all covered. And it, it's just to, to, to walk around here and, and to drive up and down the road, it just feels it just feels glorious. On the challenging side, which I would have to say, I would have to admit that there have been uh, more challenges than, than things that, that were uh, pleasant surprises. <laughs> there was a number of, of difficult ones. So <clears throat> the first one for sure is just the amount of snow and having to do all the shoveling that I did. Now, I did live in Maine in about 2008, 2009 in a small town, but that circumstance was very different. I was in an apartment. I didn't barely had to contend with moving any snow. I really just had to deal with the cold. But out here, I really had to deal with snow. I, I had to learn the term snow management and to deal with moving the snow in a way that wouldn't get in the way later. Um, so I can, I can say that this winter was very cold, but there wasn't as much snow as there normally is. And so I, I definitely found myself thinking, my God, if it snowed, say, twice as much as it did, I would start not knowing where to put this shit to be able to be able to walk around. So it's going to give me some things to think about how I can manage the, all of the snowfall next year to be able to continue to create the walkways and, and um, not run into problems with like buildings collapsing and stuff. The amount of shoveling was quite a bit. I, I don't, I've kind of was determined to not have any, any kind of gas powered uh, devices out here for this first year. And so I ended up hand shoveling everything, which uh, wasn't too bad for just the, around, the, around the house and a couple of the trails I had to do to get to my wood and such. But the driveway is a probably, I don't know, 150 feet long and shoveling that sucker out by hand, you know, the eight or so times that I did it or maybe more was, uh, was pretty rough. So I think that's kind of convinced me that uh, next year I might have to, might have to, give in a little bit and get myself a small snowblower just to be able to do the driveway. So that was one thing, was just the amount of snow and having to deal with it. Uh, but related to the cold was also just the amount of ice. I really didn't expect that to be so troublesome, but, but it has been. It was very common for there to be uh, rain during the day and then for it to get cold and freeze, and then that would be a layer of ice and it would just keep doing that and the ice would pile up over time. So as an example, at the peak of the ice, you know, the ice sheet season, I probably had about a foot thick ice on my on my driveway at the end. It, it was kind of crazy. And then as the snow started to melt off, there, I'm getting running water through that ice and it's cutting divots and making these giant potholes. And it's just kind of a nightmare down at the end of my driveway right now. Also around my yom, probably around half of the yom where I haven't been walking very much, it's very, it's like a deadly sheet of ice where it would be pretty dangerous to walk. Now I've been able to manage the ice by taking the ash from the stove that I have and dumping it uh, where it's been icy. And that's been wonderful. I mean, I've basically used the ash as fast as I've been creating it to, to act as sort of a, a really nice, this, I mean, you use it in the same way I, I would with sand, but I just kind of have this thing that I'm producing that also works really well to be able to melt the ice a little bit and to also provide traction, even if it's not gonna melt the ice. So that, that was a real godsend for me was to, to be able to use that resource and to keep it from uh, creating a situation where I could slip and really hurt myself. So in terms of what I would do differently next year, I think the main thing is I need to get this canvas carport replaced because I really had to baby, I really felt like I had to babysit it this year. Um, I ran out here quite a few times when the snow picked up and was beating snow off the, off the roof for fear that it was gonna collapse. And uh, I definitely don't wanna be as chained to having to be here uh, this year, next, excuse me, next year as I was this year. It was felt a little bit stressful to have to constantly be watching the weather and run out here every time, every time there was more than three inches of snow. So I'm hoping to get a wooden unit, a wooden structure into place, uh, in place of that uh, carport, something that I can just let snow on, let the snow pile up and not have to worry about it. That would kind of handle a good portion of the snow management that I had to deal with this last year. Um, the ice, I'll, I'll probably deal with that the same way that I did this year. One thing I didn't mention, I would say it's something that I liked, was I really wasn't sure 
how the uh, Yom and how my Little Vermont casting stove was gonna perform in these winters. And this winter was particularly cold, even though there wasn't a lot of snow, as much snow as there normally is, it was actually much colder. The, av the averages were a lot lower than they normally are here in Maine in say January and February. So there was a lot of days that were below zero or right at the edge of zero or in the teens, even when it was kind of on the warmer side. And my Yom with the insulation and the Vermont casting stove just performed m miraculously. I mean, I was basically, as long as that stove was running, I was never uh, too cold. Now, there were some nights where I had got back and this fire had gone out and I had to build a fire and it was 10 degrees outside. And that was a little rough because uh, it takes a long time for that stove to bring up enough heat in order for the place to get warm again. It might be an hour where I'm cold before you know everything was warmed up. But as long as the stove was burning, I was, I was totally fine even on the really cold nights. And I, I'm happy to say as much as I expected to have at least a couple times where I would forget to get up or not notice to get up in the middle of the night to feed the fire to keep it going, that never happened. Every single time the fire was close to going out, I noticed the temperature drop, somehow woke up and got a few logs on it to keep it going. So some kind of adaptation miracle happened there and there wasn't one night where I woke up freezing and seeing my own breath and having to build a fire. A lot of what happened over the winter is it's pretty similar to how most of this adventure has been, which is in the, in the when first something first comes up, it feels like this big struggle, I feel very frustrated, and then I just kinda, through repetition, I kinda get myself in a rhythm, I figure out how to solve the problem in a way that's not overwhelming, and then I kinda get into a groove, and I figure, okay, I've kinda got this now, and then the next challenge comes along. So, a lot of what's come up this winter with the amount of snow, figuring out where to put it, having to maintain the roofs of my, you know, of my, um, of my dwellings to prevent from collapse, make sure I keep my wood dry, all of the ice I had to contend with, the cold weather and keeping my fire going, all those things have kind of, um, all those things have kind of habituated in me now where I feel like I can handle this. You know, next winter, all that stuff is going to be, you know, it might be a little annoying at times, but it's not gonna feel overwhelming because I, I pretty much understand the scope of the challenge. Mm -hmm.